This is Suzanne Bouchard, instructor for American Institute for Paralegal Studies. We spend a lot of time in our litigation courses discussing discovery, and as we've learned, discovery is the process in a lawsuit involving the exchange of information, exhibits, and documents between the parties. The goal behind discovery is to prevent surprises and to facilitate and encourage the pretrial settlement of cases. The scope of discovery, generally speaking, is any non-privileged matter that is relevant to a party's claims or defenses. In this lecture, I want to briefly outline the major discovery tools that are available under the Rules of Procedure. This information is derived from Chapter 7 of the text, The Litigation Paralegal, the 5th edition, by James W. H. McCord. The first tool in the Litigator's Discovery Toolbox is Disclosure. Now, disclosure is mandated by the rules of procedure. The parties are required to disclose certain types of information to their opponent without waiting for a discovery request. The three categories of mandatory disclosure are initial disclosure, disclosure of information on expert testimony, and pretrial disclosure. Disclosure is covered in Rule 26 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Another discovery tool is interrogatories. These are addressed in Rule 33 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Interrogatories are written questions. They are submitted only to other parties, not to witnesses, and they must be answered in writing and under oath. Interrogatories provide a relatively inexpensive way to gather information from an opposing party, particularly as compared to depositions. And speaking of depositions, there are two main types. There's deposition by oral examination and deposition by written questions. And these are provided for in Rules 30 and 31, respectively, of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Depositions involve taking the sworn testimony of either a party or a witness prior to trial. Rule 34 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure covers a discovery tool that's commonly called a request for production. Under this rule, a party may request that another party produce documents, electronically stored information, tangible things, or the entry onto property for inspection or for other purposes. Another discovery tool is the request for physical or mental examination. This is governed by Rule 35 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Under this rule, the court may order a party whose mental or physical condition is in controversy to submit to a physical or mental examination by a licensed or certified examiner. This discovery tool is often used in tort cases in which a party is claiming a right to compensation for physical or mental injuries. Finally, there are requests for admission addressed in Rule 36 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Requests for admission differ from other types of discovery devices in that they don't necessarily seek new information. Rather, requests for admission seek confirmation of the truthfulness and accuracy of previously discovered information. They may be directed only to other parties to the lawsuit and not to witnesses or other non-parties. And like other forms of discovery, their use is limited to matters that are relevant to the lawsuit. Now, discovery can be a costly component of the litigation process, but paralegals are very useful in keeping costs down because law firms bill clients at lower rates for the work of non-attorneys. And because a lot of what is involved in the discovery process doesn't involve the actual practice of law, a paralegal with litigation experience can perform many of these tasks. Now, if you're not currently a student at AIPS, and if you would like more information about legal studies leading to careers in the law, please visit our website at AIPS.com.